Is the real estate market about to crash? I've been delaying this video, but based on what's happening in the media, I can't delay it anymore because people are saying, wait a second, in 2007, the prices went up really high, then the Fed did a huge rate cut, and then there was a crash. And people are correlating that to right now. What happened? Prices have gone skyrocket high. We've got huge affordability problems. We have the average median of a house sitting at 430 plus thousand dollars and the Fed just cut rates, and now everyone's wondering, is it crash time? Well, in today's video, we're gonna explore the seven major factors that determine whether there's gonna be a housing market crash or not. In the end, you decide, I'm gonna give you my prediction. The first factor that can determine a housing market crash is whether or not we're in an economic recession. If you remember 2007, it was the worst crash that we had seen since the Great Depression. We didn't just have a recession, we had a great recession. It's the biggest name that we could come up with since a depression. And the question is, are we in an economic recession? If you were to ask me as a business owner owning lots of companies if we've been in a recession in the last couple of years, well, the answer is yes. But the government has a very specific definition that they use. Specifically, we measure our country's revenue as what's called GDP, gross domestic product. And they look at that amount of money and what they wanna know is, have we experienced a drop in GDP this quarter from the last quarter? Well, if we actually experienced two drops back to back, technically we're in a recession. And if we're in a recession, that could lead to a housing market crash. And if we take a look at the economy in 2023 and 2024, we saw that in the last quarter of last year, we hit a peak in GDP, but then we had two quarters afterwards subsequently where we saw GDP go down. Technically, that's called a recession. So the question is, could we actually be stepping into a real estate housing crash because GDP is down? Well, if you take a look at the most recent quarter, Q2, we're actually back up again. So it's kind of a good sign. For me, we're definitely in a recession, whether they call it that or not. But just because one of these seven factors is met, it doesn't mean the market's gonna crash. These are literally the seven factors that can contribute to a housing market crash. So we're gonna look at the other six and see what you think. Number two, rising interest rates. Higher mortgage rates can make home loans more expensive, decreasing affordability and reducing buyer demand. It can also make things so expensive that it can lead to a crash. Rates have been high since 2021, but the Fed did just cut rates by 50 basis points. That's a half a percent for the first time in four years. And they've got two more opportunities to cut rates before the end of the year. And word on the street is they're probably gonna do that. Even if they do a quarter point cut during in each of those last two, rates that might be around six or just under 6% now could then be under five and a half percent. Now, this is an important side note. It is currently predicted that if rates will get to 5.25%, that it will be cheaper to own a home than rent a home. And that's gonna go from stimulating this renter's market back to a buyer's market. So interest rates have been high, but frankly, they're currently coming down right now. Could that actually be holding off a market crisis? It could be. But you see, this is where we get into the third point, which is overbuilding. We're talking about the supply and demand of real estate. Imagine that human beings that migrate to this country or the babies that we make all of a sudden grow up someday and say, I need a house to live in, but we're out of houses. Builders, build me more houses. Traditionally, over time, we're adding to our housing supply, but technically we haven't recovered since 2008. You see, when the 2008 Great Recession hit, it's because we had too many homes, hundreds of thousands of excess homes, and we didn't have buyers to buy them because we actually had all the houses that we need. And if you really wanna understand when you're going to experience a crash, it's when you have way more supply than you actually have demand. Right now, however, historically, we are in an opposite problem. We actually have way more demand for real estate than we have supply. The numbers vary from one outlet to the next, but basically it's commonly agreed that conservatively we're missing 3.2 million homes, upwards to over 6 million homes. Now you might be wondering, is that a lot or is a little? Historically, we've never had that much of a discrepancy in supply and demand. Literally, if we built as fast as we possibly could for a decade, we still may not be able to catch up to the demand for the limited supply that is out there in the market. Also, a couple years ago, when we saw the prices skyrocket, it's because we didn't have enough homes, but we had monster demand. And so people were bidding everything up higher and higher and higher. Because if you remember during the pandemic, people were like, I ain't gonna work anymore in a building. I'm gonna work at home. I need a different kind of home. And that led to a huge surge on an already building dilemma of not enough houses in the market. Now we really don't have enough houses in the market. Now, I know I said that you can't really decide if there's gonna be a crash on just any one of these factors, but the truth is, this is probably the most important factor when determining whether we're gonna have a crash or a boom.
By the way, if you're kind of new to my channel and you haven't picked up on whether we're going to have a crash or a boom, keep on watching because one of the two is going to happen in a really huge way. And at the end, I'll tell you which one. Number four, we are talking about speculation and bubbles. Have you heard the term spec builder? Spec building traditionally refers to someone that says there's land over here and there's a builder that's building homes in that community and my house has just recently gone up. I'm gonna speculate that if I put out the money for building a home in that neighborhood and then later sell it, I'd probably turn a profit. You just described 2005, 2006, 2007, leading into 2008. In fact, the market was going up so much that everyone just bet that the market was gonna go up forever. And so finally, the skeptics got involved and they said, ha ha, I'm gonna to talk to the builder in that neighborhood and I'm going to build that spec build. I'm gonna build that house and then when it's completed, I'm gonna list it on the market and I'm gonna make money because the builder is building it for $300,000 and at the rate the market is climbing, I'll probably be able to sell it for $350,000. I bet I'll pocket 40 grand. Speculation in and of itself can be very dangerous with investing, but right now it's not. Why? Because we are missing so many homes. Right now, spec building is very, very popular because people know that if they build a home and list it on the market, there's a high likelihood it's gonna sell in a reasonable time frame, and they are going to turn a profit because the market keeps on going up. Because I know that we have at least 3.2 million homes we still need to build, we are so far away from a bubble, there's no bubble to pop which means if we were going to have a real estate housing market crash, you have to wait until we actually have an excess of homes, not the opposite problem like we currently have and might for the next decade. The fifth factor in determining whether there's gonna be a housing crash is tightening credit. You see, stricter lending standards can limit access to mortgages, reducing the number of potential buyers in a market. And right now the question is, are we experiencing a tightening of credit? And overall the answer is, no, actually there's money flush with the banks. And frankly, if there was just more real estate for sale, their hoping rates come down because they've got money to lend in gross tranches. So right now this comes down to, can buyers buy homes because money is available? And the answer is yes. The banks are available, they're lending the money and people have access to that money. In other words, we are not experiencing a tightening of credit. By the way, if you go back into late 2008 and 2009, people that had credit cards, they started getting their limits reduced by banks. I remember I had a card with a $50,000 limit that became a $10,000 limit. Um, people who had home equity lines of credit, like, oh, my home's worth this and I have this HELOC, the bank started shrinking those home equity lines of credit. So all of a sudden there was a tightening of credit and it's because the crash already happened and the bank said, we don't really trust your ability to pay us back as much. So we're going to basically take some of our money potential back so you can't spend it and then maybe default on us. Number six, if there's gonna be a housing crash, we're gonna look at high levels of debt as a factor. And right now I'm gonna tell you that debt is actually running high. The average American has higher debt than average, but they have something else running even higher. And that's the amount of equity that they have in a home. As of 2024, the average American has $304,000 worth of equity. That would be equivalent to saying, this house is worth $700,000, but the person only owes $400,000. So even though debts are running high on credit, equity is running even higher on real estate. And so right now the economy is fairly healthy when it comes to higher levels of debt. The seventh and final factor in determining whether we might be looking at a real estate crash are external factors, right? Events such as natural disasters, geopolitical instability, or major policy changes, all of these things impact the housing market. And right now, all we're really seeing is that rates are coming down, and because we don't have a lot of homes, it means that I believe we're gonna see prices of real estate surge dramatically. We're actually going into a real estate boom. We're not going into a bust. The real estate market is not crashing. And for the next decade, if you own single family real estate, you're likely gonna see it continue going priced higher and higher and higher. Now when we're going to see a crash is when that number conservative of 3.2 million missing homes becomes a million missing homes becomes a half million missing homes. Once you are, are literally within 250,000 missing homes in this country, that means that you're going to have pockets around the country that are satisfied with their supply and demand ratios. And then we might start building more real estate than we actually need. That is what's going to lead to a crash. In my opinion, it's probably a decade away. Which means that the number one opportunity is not to worry about a crash, but all the money that you can be making in real estate. Truth be told, I am buying as much real estate as I possibly can. I'm tweaking my team and all my systems. I'm bringing on partners left and right. I'm converting 401ks and IRAs and home equity into more real estate. I'm building portfolios for people and I'm doing as much as I can. Why? 
because after the crash of 2008, those next five years, I helped my investors make over a hundred million dollars by transacting thousands of amazing real estate deals. I'm getting my hands on better real estate deals right now than ever before. I'm buying homes brand new for like 170 to $250,000. And if you wanna know how you can cash in on this current economy, this is the time to actually be in the market making money, not worrying about a crash. That's for the negative Nancys that don't understand the information that I'm giving to you. If you wanna ride with me and make millions of dollars in the game of real estate, click the link below and request a free complimentary game plan. Let me and my team step in your shoes and say, hey, here's how you can buy real estate the way Chris is. Heck, he'll even do it for you. And here's the kind of money that you can make based on their track record of $2 billion in real estate. Look at that track record, see the money that we're making, and see how the next decade is your opportunity to become a multimillionaire or more. But Chris, I can't get into real estate. It sounds like it takes money to make money. I'm like, actually, there's three super low cost strategies for getting into the real estate market. And if you wanna know what they are, I made a video for you. It's right here. Let me show you how anyone can invest in real estate right now.